Hello, welcome to your Chapter 2 AP Statistics video. Today we will be talking about data. What are data? Data can be numbers, um, recorded names, or other labels. Not all data represented by numbers are numerical data. In other words, you don't have to have 1 equals male and 2 equals female. Um, they can just be male, female. Um, data are useless without their context. That is something that you should remember. The W's and really 1H. Um, they are going to be what provide us context. Okay, So to provide context, we need the W's. We need to know what these are. The first one is who. The next one is what and in what units. The third one is when, the fourth one is where, the fifth, fifth one is why, if possible, sometimes you, you don't have that information, and finally the how of the data. Uh, note the answers to the who and the what are essential. The rest are nice to know, but sometimes we have incomplete information. The following data tables clearly show the context of the data presented. We've got the names of the individuals who um, are involved, and the ship to, state and country, the price, the area code, previous CD purchase, whether it was a gift, the um, ASIN numbers, and the artist. So there's a whole lot of information about that. Notice that this is a da data table that tells us the what in the columns. Okay, what information do we have? We've got um, the names of the individuals, and um, that's really the who, um, which is forms the rows for these data's data, but um, the rest, like the, the ship to country, uh, state or country, the price, the area code, uh, previous CD purchase, all of those things are um, what? They are the variables, is the, the what information they have for each individual. So again, the what are found in the columns, and then the who are the labels for the rows. So everything in the first row is information about Catherine H. Everything in the third row is information about Chris G. Okay, let's talk about each one of these in particular. The who of the data tells us the individual cases for which or whom we have collected data. Individuals who answer a survey are called respondents. People on whom we experiment are called subjects or participants. Animals, plants, and inanimate subjects uh, are called experimental units. Now, there's an important reason why we use different um, words for people and for animals in experimentation beyond the fact that people really wouldn't enjoy being called experimental units, but it is uh, for the very point of reminding the experimenters of the humanity of the of people when they are involved in experiments. It's very um, easy, it's just part of the human condition, that experimenters can forget that the people involved in their experiments, the subjects, are every bit as human as the people on whom they hope to apply the new knowledge. Um, sometimes, um, historically, experimenters have uh, not treated subjects in their experiments well. Everything from the Nazi doctors in um, Germany to the Tuskegee syphilis experiment in the U.S. Um, if you look up abuses in experimentation, you, you can find a long history um, that has resulted in very specific protocols in human experimentation. And, and one of the, the little baby things that's done is that we give human people who are involved in experiments just a, a different title than things like animals or plants or inanimate subjects in, in experimentation. Sometimes people just refer to data values as observations and are not clear about the who. But we need to know the who of the data so we can learn what the data say. We need to know what the observations refer to. What and why. Variables are characteristics recorded about each individual. The variables should have a name that identify what has been measured. To understand variables, you must think about what you want to know. Some variables have units that tell you how each value has been measured and tell the scale of the measurement. The international system of units links together all systems of weights and measures by international agreement. 
there are seven base units from which all other physical units are derived. And so you can see for distance, it's meter. For mass, it's kilogram. For time, it's the second, and so on. A categorical or qualitative variable names categories and answers questions about how cases fall into those categories. Categorical examples, sex as in gender, um, race, ethnicity, all categorical variables. A quantitative variable is a measured variable with units that answers questions about the quantity of what is being measured. So, for example, income in, in dollars, U.S. dollars to be particular, uh, 2012 U.S. dollars would be even more specific. Height in inches, weight in pounds, and so on. The questions we ask a variable, the why of our, our analysis, shape what we think about and how we treat the variable. Why do we want to know the information? What are we really interested in about that specific either quantity or category? And that shapes the why. For example, in a student evaluation of instruction at a large university, one question asked students to evaluate the statement. The instructor was generally interested in teaching on the following scale, one disagrees strongly, two disagree, three neutral, four agree, five agree strongly. Is interest in teaching categorical or is it quantitative? So there, you know, you can look, we've got these categories, but then they're assigned numbers. So again, our question is, is interest in teaching categorical or quantitative? We sense an order to these ratings, but there are no natural units for the variable interest in teaching. Okay, for instance, we don't, we don't know exactly how to measure disagree strongly or disagree as far as interest in, in teaching. There's no universal way to measure that. Variables like interest in teaching in this case are often called ordinal variables. There's an order to the categories that you choose. With an ordinal variable, look at the why of this study to decide whether to treat it as categorical or quantitative. And, and this is certainly more challenging than trying to decide whether um, answering the question, um, what is the make of your car, and someone answering uh, Jeep versus Lexus, um, there that's clearly categorical. You're not measuring something. Or when you ask somebody, you know, um, how, I don't know, big around is your, the circumference of your head, and they answer you in so many centimeters, that's obviously quantitative. But the ordinal variables can be a little trickier. Okay, we're going to stop there and come back to this counts count, and that will be our second video. So I'll see you back in just a second.